Okay, we're about to interview uh, Charlie Lasser. And Charlie, the topic today is the Chapman Chamber of Commerce. And one of the major things about the Chapman Chamber of Commerce is it's gone through a process where it bid to be tendering the Tourist Information Centre. And the District of Chapman has decided to keep the Info Centre, the Tourist Information Centre, and to run it themselves. Can you give us a little bit of a history of the Tourist Information Center? Okay, well, I came on the board uh, of the Chamber of Commerce in December, and uh, I uh, was uh, picked for uh, treasurer of the Chamber. And I've had a, a quite an ex a long experience with the Chamber going back into the uh, uh, mid-70s and the 80s and right through. and. Uh, the Chamber has looked for many, many years after the Tourist uh, uh, Information, Information Centre, and uh, so this time we, we put a bid in, and the uh, bid was, they felt, was too high, and so we, uh, we re they, at the same time, unbeknown to us, they, they bid on the, themselves, which was quite a surprise, and uh, so we are, their bid was 77,000 and our bid was 120. And so I talked with the administrator and uh, Doug, we agreed that I would come back with the revised uh, budget. We came back with the revised budget of uh, uh, 94,000 and they, uh, found, we found out last night uh, that they came up with a uh, 88,000, which would be a $6,000 difference. But the one big difference is they were only going to have open two days a week in winter time, and we're going to open three days a week. So it's just about a saw off. So, and I don't understand, they have not got a, a place yet where they're going to hold it. They're going to have to get temporary quarters. And um, it doesn't, um, I, what I tried to do when I came on the chamber, I uh, wanted to try to. Uh, bring some uh, common sense into this and after being mayor for 22 years at Chetland I thought we could sit down and come up with an amicable uh, situation but um, it, uh, it didn't work out that way. We had a meeting uh, yesterday uh, before the council meeting with the, uh, the mayor and the administrator for three quarters of an hour and we went over the, a lot of the items but uh, unfortunately, the mayor had nothing to say. Uh, the administrator did all the talking. And uh, uh, then we went into the regular council meeting where all they did was uh, adopt uh, the motion that they would uh, do it themselves. And uh, I told the administrator before that they can't do it for the price they say they can. If they have to get temporary quarters with the new signing and everything, their, act, their actual costs are going to be higher than what our costs would have been. Yeah, I, I think you've outlined the situation really well. Where do you think the Chamber will be um, after this decision? Um, what impact will it have on the Chetland District uh, Chamber? It'll have a tremendous impact. Uh, they've came up with a, a a revised uh, items that they would like us to uh, look after. And for instance, uh, the chainsaw last year uh, carvings were uh, $60,000. They said they would allow 40 this year. Well, I'll just give you some figures the difference between last year and this year. Um, we only have uh, 10500 in sponsorship. We have lost $20,000, 20, which are not sponsoring. We have uh, CNRL for 5000 they said no. Walter Energy, of course, which is more or less finished mining, uh, for 6000 Grisco Camps for 3000 and 6000 in uh, appearance fees. And uh, the wood alone um, is going to cost us at least twenty to twenty-three thousand, and maybe as high as twenty-seven, because every other year we have a, we have a special type of wood we require, and uh, there are there is none in the yard at all in the public works yard, and uh, we're going to have to purchase everything, and these cedar trees that we get are special special trees, 
And uh, see, we have the championship carvers of the world here, and they want the best timber to be able to show what they can do. And uh, I'm afraid that um, we may it, we may have to cancel it. You, yeah, okay, you're talking about the chainsaw carving. So the impact on this tourist information center is really complicated and weighing well their impact in other areas of the community of Chevan. Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. What's going to happen is, uh, you see, the trouble is that they go from full time in winter to three, three, uh, two days a week. What are tourists going to do in the other three days or four days when they get here? And right now, with the, uh, the way uh, our economy, our dollar is down, we're going to have all kinds of more American tourists coming up. And this is not the time to draw back. Uh, now is the time the, we have right now 40%, I understand, up to 40% of our commercial uh, buildings are vacant. And we have businesses going out of business. And now is the time we should be encouraging those, uh, the people to shop at home, to when tourists come through, to shop here, stay for one extra day. If we can do that, we can turn a lot of this around. We can bring our community back to what it was before. Well, oh, very good. Do you have any last words, Charlie? Because this is uh, quite an emotional subject for some, and it's a big debate in town. So, uh, Charlie, any last words on the Chetwin uh, Info Center and the Chetwin Chamber of Commerce? Well, you know, I've almost, if I didn't know any better, I would almost say that there is an effort to diminish the ability of the Chamber of Commerce to operate. And I would hate to see that happen because, as I say, I've been a part of it now for the last, well, since uh, actually about 73. And I would hate to see the Chamber uh, uh, go the way of other things. Uh, we have to keep a vital Chamber of Commerce if we want our town to continue to stabilize and grow. Well, thank you very much, Charlie.